you for a second. Are you locals? Yes. Great. In one hour, I'm meeting Lars von Trier. Do you think he's the most famous living Danish person? No. No. Who is the most famous? The Queen. Pretty famous. Yeah, I think the Queen. Yeah, the Royals. Well, the Queen Margaret, H.C. Uh, Anderson. Что значит, ребят, монархия? Они все говорят королева. Do you think he's the most famous Danish person? А вы из России? Да? Туристы? Да. Вы знаете Ларса фон Триера? Нет. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi. Can I have one hot dog? One hot dog, yes. Do you know Lars von Trier? Yes, yes, of course. You Tell me, is he the most famous person of Denmark? No. No? Queen. The queen. After Queen, Lars von Trier. Ah, strange thing. Strange movie. Yeah, so you are not too. fan of him, no? Ah. из Одессы. А вы знаете, кто такой Lars von Trier? Не знает. Триера не знает, Собчак знает. Все, все нормально. Давай, давай. А, Россия вперед. Сейчас они выступят, и мы захватим микрофон. Do you think he's the most famous living person in Denmark? No, I think that's the Queen. After Queen? Yeah, maybe after the Queen he might be. Thank you, guys. I just wanted uh, your attention for one moment. My name is Ksenia Sobchak. I'm from Russia. Who is the most famous living person of Denmark after the Queen? Me. <laughs> no, really. Do you have any options? Living person and not the queen. Who is it? Who knows Lars von Trier? Can you? You know. Who likes his movies? Can you? Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I waited for it so long. This is my oh. crew. Yeah. We want to make a dogma style document. Quite simple. I just have to okay. Yeah, this is the okay. Read so many times of how simple your house is, but I never realized it will be that not full of any furniture. Very Scandinavian style. Can I a little bit look around? This is your working area. Oh, yeah. What is that? Centroba don't want me to tell you what I'm working on, but I would like to. It's the, the end of the campaign. It's the series which you already did many yeah. years ago. Yeah. Actually, you were the first one to do the series uh, after Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks was a great uh, inspiration. So you are getting up to 20 years to that, yeah? Yeah, I saw it. It was uh, a nice little thing to do, but it grew, and now it's really big. What does that say, for example? It says Mona begins to rise. So it's like small scenario. Yeah, it, it's part of it, but it's not the end, so. Mm. So this is where you work. This is where you create things. How do you do this? Normally I have my computer and it's like everybody. I have a small work. present for you. You know, okay. you're, for me, you're number one in the world, my genius director. So I, I brought you some guilty Russian pleasure, you know. You cannot actually bring through customs, but I did especially <laughs> because of you. This Fantastic. is Russian black caviar. Wow. From real smugglers, the best one, which you can never buy in a boutique. Uh -huh. You're the smuggler. Yeah, I'm the smuggler, okay. actually. <laughs> so, 
I don't know so if you what, eat what, what, caviar, but... Uh, I, I, I certainly do. Uh, it's <laughs> fantastic. I'll put it in, in, the, in the fridge. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> a cunning way of a journalist to see what's inside Lars von Trier's fridge. No, now we know, it's ketchup here. Yes. And Dijon original. <laughs> what's that? It's a part of uh, credits for Antichrist, I can see. It's a painter, Pierre Kierkeby, who sadly just died. Is it okay to watch what is it there? Or is it something secret inside? There's nothing <laughs> secret, but I don't think you should film my, my best bedroom. Well, but maybe, you know, maybe you torture women here or something like this, you know, a special oh, yes. room with lots of stuff from medieval ages. You, you are so right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Secret stairs down in the and dungeon, down, like dun in dun Jack's movie. You know, lots of bodies. This used to be when I have my family here. I withdraw to down here. So not to be with them, you come here and start yeah. creating things. Yeah. yeah, it's more quiet here. But I would never believe that Lars von Trier no, but I don't would use. leave this. This you don't use, no. No. Never. But I, but I should. So why do you have it here? Because, Just because I should. Great, so this is your working place. Stanley Kubrick. Yes. You love Stanley Kubrick? Oh yes. What is your favorite movie of his? Barry Lyndon. So that means that from time to time you watch movies because I've read that from 20 years old time you don't watch anything. No, so. but sometimes... You make exceptions. Yeah, because we produce films and then I talk to the directors about the, the films and then I have to see them, you know. So we, I, sometimes I do, but it's very little and I don't know any actors of today, you know. Mm, amazing place. Jill Jacob, your friend, yes. once said that you can judge what Trier's mood is by the length of his hair. When his hair is very short, that means he's quite aggressive. And the mm. longer hair it gets, well, uh, the kinder he gets. Okay. So it's, it's the obvious, opposite of Goliath. Was that some, wasn't that something with... Goliath's hair, when it was cut, he was done with. Yeah, maybe he's right. I, uh, well, I feel quite confident. So what your mood is like now? How do you feel now? I feel good. The, the kids are all grown up and uh, I have four very nice children. Here I sit alone and I'm quite content and I am still working. After the movie you made, the house that Jack built, mm -hmm. do you feel kind of emptiness or some period of time when you cannot come back to some big work of movies again? The only thing I feel is that the shooting of the film was very... I had a lot of anxiety, which made it unpleasant, but it, it was not unpleasant because of anybody. It was my internal anxiety. You talk about some different states of mind you have, about the fears you have. What is your period of mind now? Are you fighting with some inner devils right at the moment? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I didn't show you my bedroom because then you, you would see how many pills I take. And I take 14 different pills, so that must kind of just to put a lid on the inner di diamonds. Demon, sorry. That happens uh, during already a long period of time. It's again some depression coming on you. Yeah, but but it's it's more effic efficient now. And what about alcohol? You said that you had this problem, but is it a, more of a cure for the states of minds, or it's your enemy with whom it, you fight? It, well, it, it very often starts as what we call self-medications. But I take some therapy, and so I hope I. Right now, I'm I'm 
I'm clean. You visited some anonymous alcoholic groups, but I couldn't yeah, yeah. visualize that Lars von Trier, genius of the world, is sitting in a group of people oh, telling yes. his story. It's really true? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I am now in a new group because the old AA had a lot of other things about God in it, and I'm not religious, sorry, man, but it's the same. It's very good people. Most of these people remember the first meeting I w went to. One of them really looked like like a vag vagabond, and you know, was really into deep trouble. And he came to me after the meeting and said, "Do you have a place to sleep tonight?" You know, he wanted to give me a, a corner of his. I don't know what he slept in, but that was very touching. So they didn't know who are you? I mean, they didn't get any idea mm, of that you're a famous worldwide mm, no, no, director? No, no, But knowing about many of your fears, how did you find your comfort of sharing something intimate with people you don't know? But, the, but, the, but, but that, that I don't think have ever been the problem. I'm quite outspoken, as you know. It can make troubles for me. <laughs> it's not a big problem, and uh, especially in a group where they are used to doing this and where they, there's a lot of re respect. I think many of the people would love to become alcoholic just to get into this group to be near okay, you. Okay, I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> you know, alcohol is a fantastic drug, but sometimes it rules you. It, the idea is that if you ru rule it, it's okay, but if it rules you, then you have a problem. In Denmark, you are one of the most famous people. It's like, you know, you, Gans Christian Andersen, Hamlet and Little Mermaid. So you're in, in, in the company like this. Okay, then I'm the Little Mermaid. So you're like yeah. the most important diamonds of Denmark. Yeah, okay. And now you're creating yeah. diamonds about your every movie. Tell yeah. me about this project. It's seven years ago I got this idea. I like that to be something, to add something to the films. Then I saw a lot about what that could be and I, I was have been fascinated by diamonds from when I read Diamonds are forever, you know, and I studied them a little and then I thought, yeah, let's try that. If we can find a man who's crazy enough to put up some money and that's the unit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually a big fan of diamonds too. Yes. So, you know, <laughs> so as a girl, I yes. understand you very good. And why you decided to establish uh, diamonds in Russia? I have a, a colleague who is in based in Paris and she found Leonid and I never, she never told me how, how she found him. <laughs> okay. And so far he has, hopefully, I'm, he's not coming with, with, with a big bill in the end, you know. It's a happy relationship. So your first uh, diamond is melancholia, the next one will be? It will be break, breaking the waves. Breaking the waves, and yeah. you will be doing it in Russia. I will probably be doing it from here, but we now you you have a, a, a lot of possibilities in 3D print. When I got a scan of a, of a rough, then then I can start working. And the Russian cutters are very good and have very modern machinery, so. I'm looking forward to that. When I first heard about this project, I thought maybe this is a way out for Lars von Trier because movie business is becoming so uh, politically correct that becoming an artist is something a way out to make some, you know, exhibitions yeah, as it's, an it's art. It's really, it's, it's, it's difficult to make a diamond that's not politically correct. <laughs> That's true. That, that would really be a challenge. Thank you very much for... <laughs> you know, the last refuge of non-political correctness is uh, contemporary art. You will find that the Danish film law is... you can do a lot. I'm sure it's one of the countries in the world where you can do the most. Many of my films are censored in one way or another, you know, when they travel. But can you regard, for example, as house that the Jack built as a video art? 
not a movie. For me, you can, you know, regard it as anything. Um, uh, but, but, but video art, yeah. I still, in my mind, work for the big screen. That's how I, I imagine the films. And even though it's we, like you do, work on, on, on video, I still see it as a film. Can you imagine all the same things you do, mm -hmm. but your premieres are not in Cannes? where you were persona non grata, as we all remember. For, se you, for seven years. Yeah. yeah, for seven years. But you do it in Venice Biennale of Modern Art, or Manifesto. I'm a very bad traveler, I must say. I know, yeah. Yeah, so uh, for modern people, it's so easy to go to Canada just to jump into a plane and jump out again. But I take the car and it takes three days for me, so it's a little complicated. But but my terms with the can is is good again, and I think we have spoken about what happened. It was quite terrifying because yeah, I was, I was threatened to ha go five years to jail in Marseille. Yeah, I, I I know that Russian prisons are not the place to go, but after them. I think Marseille comes, it can really influence a very nervous person like me, but also a normal person would be. And the whole thing was, of course, a misunderstanding. And uh, I think I, I was let down a little bit by, by the moderator because I ended up saying, OK, I'm a Nazi, which is just a way of ending a conversation. You know, if, if you still say that blah, 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 then I stop it by saying that. And the moderator mind should have said, what do you mean by that? That was all it had taken. And I would have explained that my, the man I thought was my father was Jewish and the man that was my father was German. And so, the names of your children are Jewish too. That's, that's, that's right. I felt pain that in the modern world, such a big intellectual figure like you has to explain so many times that he was misunderstood. Yeah. Don't you think that it means we live in a not kind of a right world and the price you have to pay for good relations with Kans now is very high. You have to tell every sorry idiot that didn't mean this. Yeah. I meant another thing. I was not right. I think the the internet was part of the problem because Twitter has, ju has just started and you know then it's a matter of of saying things in very few words. I was stupid too because I, of course, didn't think of where we were in France. And, uh, you know, the French have a very bad conscience because of the Vichy government, you know, gave all the Jews up to the Germans. Somebody told me that if I'd said it in Germany, no, nobody would have noticed. Do you like living in a world where now it's all black and white? You cannot even say a name Hitler without all the attention to you and cannot even discuss aesthetics of mm. something or some controversial points. Or in a world of tolerance and political correctness, that society became a Hitler itself, you know, bullying anyone yeah, who says something. But, but in my belief, uh, we have lived the golden age of democracy in the Western world. And we didn't know, so we just kept on you asking for more. And now there's, as you know, a great right turn in Western Europe and in America with Trump, which is completely ridiculous. The young people have to fight this right, this uh, turn to the right. But in the movie you made, yeah, you I, were I, the I, same uh, Lars von Trier, the same strong, and who shows, I'm sorry, fuck to everyone, because still you had the topics of, you know, this tree near Buchenwald, you yeah. had the topics mm. of icons of evil and, you know, Hitler and all these things. So you still stand Yeah, but, it, but it's because it's central things. And I think that one of the most important lessons that can be learned is that we all have a Nazi in, inside us or, or, or a Hitler or whatever you want. But Hitler was extreme. I just heard that from a, a new book 
that he was on speed balls. He had, he had, you know, cocaine and heroin injected every morning during the whole war. I don't know if it makes it more human. It was a terrible disaster, not only for the Jews, but for a lot of Russians. And the war was extremely brutal in Russia, of course. Yes, but this doesn't mean we cannot discuss no, how no, beautiful no. the uniform was or how Lenny Riefenstahl was a talented director, for example. No, I think that's important to discuss because that then you, you think about it. And yes, I'm sorry, it's some birds that are saying something. They are very territorial, is that what it's called? They are fighting each other all night. These little ones with the white thing, it, I don't know what they're called in English, but they're fighting all night about nothing. And then next, the next morning they start again. <laughs> Nonetheless, I was on your premiere in Russia and uh, the scriptwriter of the scenario said that it's a movie about those feminists' values mm -hmm. and how we should you know, think about this hard subject. Lars, are yeah. you kidding me? But it's not a feminist movie, and thank no. God it's not a feminist movie. No. Why tell me why this movie? I, 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 I don't know why it was to be a feminist movie. I have a maybe a little special r relationship to feminism because my mother was chairman of the Danish mov movement of yes. women. So, uh, but of course, it has to hurt a little bit to see a film about a serial killer. I'm sure you have serial killers in Russia. In the US also, that's, just, it, that's quite a lot. Maybe it's the same point that, uh, as in all the films, is that we have to uh, look into us, to ourselves and see if we can follow our own moral and remember that uh, there is maybe a serial killer in all of us. I uh, was very interested in one of your uh, phrases in interviews that okay. you were very much fascinated with Strindberg's attitudes, uh, incorrect attitude towards women. So can you tell me a little bit more? What do you mean by your special attitude towards feminism? I can tell you that Strindberg lived just over here, two kilometers from here, when he was uh, fleeing Sweden because he, he thought he was accused of uh, uh, rape, which he was not. He, he was, but he was a very nervous man also. And he, he wrote some of his best plays here. And he hated the, the, the Danes, of course. But if you compare him to uh, Ibsen, then I think you'll, you'll find that, that Strindberg is much more up to date because he, he has these wild provocations and terrible temper. And somehow, early in life, I, 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 I read quite a lot. So what, in your opinion, was his strange attitude towards women you were telling about? He once uh, took Siri von Essen, his wife, and threw her down some stairs. All his marriages were one long fight, you know, the sexes were fighting, so... But I'm quite comfortable with th that. But it has nothing to do with your personal relations with women? N no, I'm, 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 I, I don't consider myself to be, you know, kind of a, an abuser. <laughs> well, I understand. Yeah, I'm... Yeah. You, even after Bjork's words. How I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, no, but I, I, I just feel because she also wrote a letter to Nicole Kidman saying she shouldn't take the part. So, so then you're really pissed off. That's all I can say. She's really pissed off. And it's a pity because she's one of the best actors I've worked with. You made her so great in your movie. You made yeah, her actually or, or, a star. Or, How did but, you but she gave so much. And the uh, problem was when we were together just in private, then she became a, a little devil. And so did I probably. Um, 
you know, the, the pro one of the problems is that uh, Iceland has been a Danish colony for 400 years or something like that. And everybody in Iceland <laughs> hate Danes. Her, her grand grandfather said that uh, she should never work with a Dane because he would eat her soul. Maybe that's what happened during the movie, no? Uh, I doubt it. If somebody <laughs> ate the soul, then I think it was the opposite way, but I... <laughs> no, but it, it was really hard to do because we, we never knew if, you know... Yeah, but I just want to understand, how did you feel? You made her a big star and then you read all this stuff about you in the company of Me Too, where now you know that it's another big point, you know. Yeah. One point is everyone is obsessed with Hitler. Who said something about Hitler? He said, let's punish him, let's put him to jail. Another yeah. point is who raped someone, who kissed someone. Me Too all over the world. And you, in this uh, order, you see Bjork, for whom you made so much. Oh, no, How could no. she do that? She was always in Iceland considered to be a genius, which I think she is. Um, so, so every work she did, she had the last saying. And this, I had the same, you know. So we had to make agreements on a anything. It, it was very tiresome. When I was looking at this Me Too scandal with Van Steen, yeah. I understood that you already shoot Uma Thurman in a very funny role of a, sorry, of a bitch who was, you know, put uh, in, smashed in the yeah. first 10 minutes of your movie because she's so stupid and so, you know, badly behaved aggressively. She becomes the main icon of this Me Too movement. Yes. And I think you should be so much afraid of her that now, as a postal uh, uh, of this uh, Me Too, uh, I, I, I could say something about <laughs> shootings of Jack or you. Yeah, no, I think I have a very good re relationship with <laughs> Uma. But she could kill you in a second. Do you realize that? Oh, yes, but that she could without Me Too. <laughs> Yeah, but coming out and saying something after Van Steen or yeah. any other. Yeah. I was shooting with Lars now in House the Jack Built. Yeah. You know how he behaved? He put his hand on something, I don't know what. And that's all. That would be yeah, the end. No, I'm not afraid of that. I don't think she was offended in any way. She could support Bjork and she, make it Oh, oh yes, but, uh, but that's, that's uh, the way. First, you know, the internet is, in, is uh, introduced. And then everybody says, oh, that's fantastic. Now it's real democracy because everybody can say what they want. But the problem with it is, of course, that, that it becomes very much what we call the parliament of the street. You know, that every rumor is taken serious. And uh, I, I think it's, it's a good idea. And, and, and if it's used right, it's an important thing, but there are just a lot of dangers in it also. I have an important question to you. Don't you think that this parliament of the street mm -hmm. became actually the dictatorship of the street? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the discussion becomes simpler, lower, and actually the, the biggest dictator now is this parliament of the street. They dictate mm -hmm. the rule and execution they make faster without any trial yeah 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 because we had we used to have this very good rule that so, somebody is innocent until he's proven guilty no it's not like this anymore no and and that somebody has to sit down from all over the world and talk a little bit about it, the internet how it should be used and how it should not be used and I know it's, uh, I'm, I'm not a man of, who, who's in favor of censorship at all. I believe in saying everything you can. But th there are people who would use things in the wrong way, if you ask me. For example, Kevin Spacey will never come back to the movies in Hollywood over no, his scandal. No, are no. you ready, for example, to shoot Kevin Spacey in your kingdom? Or you will I, I'm not. I'm not really sure what his 
his his crime is. But I I I will will wait till he get a sentence from from a court. Then then we can discuss it. I don't know the man, so I, I so he, he's a good be, actor. So if you will be plead guilty, you won't shoot. I have to see the details. Ethical moment for your for what you do. Is it important? Or you think that art should go out of the borders of ethical things and morale? I still believe in this thing called provocation. When I was young, it was very popular and, and considered a, a political statement, you know, if you, if you made a provocation. And it might be difficult to see important it is to keep on doing these, these things. But of course you can also make provocations on the internet and that will probably, but that is for a new generation to find. I have one thing I wanted yes. to do with you. I yes. want to play a small game. Oh. These are the scenes from your movie. Okay. You remember what he showed to the camera? Yeah, in yeah. An episode near the car, verbal superiority, intelligence. So these two I'm taking out because they are very positive. Egocentrism, vulgarnost, grubost, impulsivnost, narcissism. No, I'm not a dumbass. Intellect. Иррациональность. Это необычно. Манипуляция. Психопат никогда не признает себя психопатом. You know, all his demons before journalists and discuss them. So, let's fantasize. These are all your demons. We all remember those worlds there from the movie. Let's I make... don't even remember them. But, but the, these are, you know, the characteristics of a psychopath. Exactly. So, so, so what you're saying is that we should test if I'm a psychopath? No, no. <laughs> not of course, but I just want to play with you a game of okay. demons of every person. Yes. So let's, like in a football match, decide between two of them each time, and then we will choose the main one. So what demon is bigger, mood uh, swing or vulgarity for you? From the mood swings, the vulgarity comes right so so that makes the mood swings the bigger the bigger okay so which is the mood swing between manipulation and irrationality which one wins manipulation of course i knew that you will answer this by the way speaking about manipulation yes you always say in all the interviews that you hate people who try to make something of themselves that they're not. And you hate hypocrisy in this way. At the same time, you manipulate a lot in your movies, but this always comes but, but off with, from your hands because people don't judge it like manipulation. You are the greatest manipulator of the movies of today. How do you... But, but, but that's kind of, in the old days when you saw a film, half of the time it was dark in the cinema, right? Because of the, the images. Yeah. And it's kind of, you, you have to be pre prepared to be manipulated. Yes. A little bit. That's part of the game with seeing a film. That is, if you're not manipulated, then you could have saved the money for the ticket. These, these are keys. <laughs> And I am very fond of geese. They, they travel all the way to Lapland and Siberia for... It. That's true. So maybe they are it, Russians. That could be. These two I have here every year, but they might be Russians, but then they spend their va va vacation in Denmark. <laughs> so you see, we have so much in common. So manipulation, of course. By the way, by uh, thinking about manipulation, I was so much, you know, shocked by the idea which I wrote in actually Nielsen's book that the on one of your films where you wrote uh, Gardener, uh, do you remember? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Where you wrote about the girl that uh, Anna was uh, dead after because of leukemia after oh, the shootings right, right. and it was, that was not actually quite a good idea посвящается анне скоропостижно скончавшейся от лейкемии после съемок этого фильма 
that, that was... Uh, this is so cynical. It, it is very cynical, and, 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 but, I, but I'm, since I, I worked in the commercial business, you know, making commercials and, and, and PR, then it was, yeah, it, very cynical, but... Uh, so you made fun of all the people who, you know, write something like this? No, crazy. but I, 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 saw it, I saw it that uh, it would make the film a little more serious, you know. <laughs> okay, so... But it was not nice, not nice. Narcissism or impulsivity? What demons wins? I don't know. Imp Be truthful. <laughs> <laughs> because we people who love Lars, we already know the answer. Does Lars know the answer for himself? Yeah, narcissism, you're all right. <laughs> well, great. Is rudeness a game, egotism? Yeah, but. You have the answers. <laughs> yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Egotism. And Play. then you're going to put all these together and then... Yes, it's like football. Do you watch football? Uh, Never. I know you don't. So in but I watch, I watch tennis. Now we have semi-final. Okay. I just choose by, you know, I don't watch. It's like in cards. Okay, so narcissism, mood swing. Yeah, narcissism is probably worst, or, or, or have always been considered the worst crime. So it comes to the final. And who will play with narcissism, manipulation or egotism? That's a hard choice, actually. Yeah, that's... I don't know what would you choose. No, I don't know either. So egotism be, be, is kind of synonymous with narcissism, so let's maybe yeah. choose manipulation because we already have narcissism in the <laughs> yeah, final. Okay. So yeah? you're gonna Yeah, yeah, yeah that's but that, that, that that's how, how how we consider the the, the ra ra Russians. They will will always bend the rules. <laughs> that's the most interesting part. World Cup. Lars von Trier fights mm -hmm. with two main demons. <laughs> Manipulation or not? But, but I don't think it's kind of a full picture of me. <laughs> of course, but it's a small, yeah, yeah, small little picture. But I, I, I think they work together. <laughs> yes, that's true. But who is? Uh, but couldn't it be leader? a third? It CEO, could. CEO, who is CEO? Manipulation is probably the winner. Great. That's a big final, that's true. <laughs> but I will still say that it's part of the game. Of course. Yeah. So, but when you do your manipulations, do you make fun of the ways cinema works? Is it always a game with the cinema itself? I think that the manipulation, as I said, is an important part of, of film. Or, or theater or, or whatever. So, so it's actually, if there was no manipulation the, at all, then all film watchers in the world would be very disappointed. But you understand when I see people that are showed to me like uh, ill of cancer and things like this, for yeah. me it's kind of you, it's like commercial things, you know, you sell something that maybe really could touch me, but, it, yeah. you know, they sell it to me. But when I see a duck in your movie, yeah. that's something that makes me... It was film, filmed down here yeah. and it was the easiest special effect we ever made. Because it was just a, a robber leg, kind of, he, he, was, he was having the duck thing here and and the, there was one rubber leg sticking out. Here, so it was shoot here? Yeah, it was just uh, 100 wow. meters down yeah, there. Yeah, it looks like this. And yeah. tell me, and this scene with the, with the people hunting, Yeah. It's, it was not here, no, but not no, far no. away? No, it's not so far away. It was shot in Denmark, all of it. Mm. Okay. So half of the people uh, thought it's a comedy, but half of the people went out 
saying how could you torture you know people like this what do you think about this you like when people leave your movies and say i don't want to look at it anymore i i, I like when there when there are different or different opinions that's very important because the ma mainstream i have never been very fond of so so last thing about russia do you know that's an information I want to share with you. Yes. That Russia became a country that watched Jack more than all over the world. And that's a fact. That's How a... can you explain it to me, please? First of all, I've, I'm very proud of it because, you know, my number one director in the world is Tarkovsky. So that makes me very proud. I started out being a, a communist when I was young and we felt very warmly about the Soviet Union at that time. Then later on you found out that there were things that was not so nice. The, the problem with communism, I think, is that the values are good, but it's maybe impossible to, to ever implant without it turning into a dictatorship, which is of course bad. What was your question again? About <laughs> Russia, how come Russian people like it so much? They like vodka. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some other explanations. <laughs> no, yeah. You will be the one who should judge that because I, 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 I wouldn't be able to say. It's one of my answers is because the world changed so much that Russia, strangely enough, became the last resort mm -hmm. of political uncorrectness. Yeah. The people can go on streets with uh, saying they like Hitler. We, mm. we have Russian march where yeah. people go with swastiks on it. Yeah. So our country is very radical in this term. I'm for the principle. In Denmark we have a law also that it's, it's not forbidden to be an, an, a, a Nazi in Denmark, you know, and, and that is good because then we can see that it's just eight very confused people who wear a swastika. But that means that, you know, in Europe now, sometimes you cannot breathe because of this political No, no, it's, but ter in it's ter terrible. In yeah. France, you know, half of my films can't be shown anymore. Yes, this is what I'm telling about. Yeah. And in Russia, it's not like this. People can discuss things. They can think themselves and they mm -hmm. can discuss. Yeah. So maybe for you, Russia is the last refuge where now you can, you know, so, come sorry, and I, work I, and be understood. I can sit in this little cottage in the woods from from the mirror даже когда я просто вспоминаю и детство и мать то у матери почему-то всегда твое лицо but there's another problem with the mirror lars i should i know it's your favorite movie and i know even that the fact that tarkovsky have seen your movie and didn't like it yes. even that didn't stop you from liking him and adoring no, him for no no life. no but that's how it should be the old one should never like the younger yeah. ones but you should know one secret about russia every girl in a bathing suit in her instagram in russia would say tarkovsky is her favorite director. Really? Yeah. Tarkovsky but, but is like Dostoevsky and Tarkovsky. Everyone knows them. They're like, it's it's like Filosofsky. We even have a proverb about this. All the directors, I, even I, the I, worst I, ones, I, want to shoot like Tarkovsky. Yeah. And people, you know, real intellectuals, they okay, hate Tarkovsky. Okay, the but end. then I, I, I don't consider myself a real intellectual, <laughs> oh, but, but Dostoevsky is a fantastic writer. But of course. so was Tolstoy. I think my n number one novel is War and Peace. No, which. No, they are genius. And yeah. for me, they're genius, of course. But it's very hard to still like them when they become like Donald Duck. Yeah, yeah. Like what you're telling. Yeah, but that's, that's what happens. And, yeah. and the same I would say if you say Hans Christian Andersen to me. You great, know. great writer, but yeah. he's also Donald Duck. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yes. it's too much. So Tarkovsky is like McDonald's already in Russia, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. because our country is so obsessed. That's very, that's it. interesting because I I remember when when these films were were made and I didn't have the the impression that they were successes. You know, uh, uh, the mirrors specifically was 
was mentioned as, as a failure. And how did you feel when you found out that Tarkovsky watched your movie and said, it's not nice? What was your feeling? Did your soul cry? No, inside? no, no, no. I've, I've, I've tried this a couple of times. I wrote, wrote a lot of letters to Bergman of how much I loved him. And he, ne he never, he never wrote me back. Maybe that was good because, but he saw my films. He saw, he, he, he had this, this little house and on an island where he sat and saw all, all the films that were made in, in Europe, I think. You know, Tarkovsky in his diaries once wrote, I was invited to a film festival. Me, Bergman, Bertolucci and Antonioni. Mm -hmm. I can understand everything, but what Antonioni has to do with it? About whom of your of the directors who live now could you say that you would be okay if they will be also invited with you? Whom could you put near you? Like Tarkovsky put Bergman and Bertolucci. I think Bertolucci was extremely good when he started and he ended off not so good. No, but I mean now. Just I don't know. The, it, it, will, it will always be historical somehow. Um, so you still don't watch any movies? I, don't, I cannot believe it. You haven't seen Palm Fiction of Tarantino? Yes. I, I must say, and The Matrix I saw. And I enjoyed both of them. And Cohen, do you know? Cohen, I don't see, but that's only because they have won the, the Golden Palm so many times when I was in competition. So I got <laughs> really mad. So I stopped seeing Cohen. They are, I'm sure, good guys and making very good films, but I don't see them. Paul Anderson? I haven't seen much, but what I've seen, I liked. Okay, so, so still something you watch. One more question. You are such a provocator of the movies. Can you fantasize if you would be a director in a society like Russia, where you cannot provocate people with something which they see on the streets every day, how could you provocate in these circumstances? I, Give me ideas. I, Let's I, do a brainstorm. I, I, I'm, I'm sure I couldn't. I'm sure I couldn't. <laughs> so you think it won't be possible? I could make some remakes of Tarkovsky, you know, really, really bad re remakes. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.